According to history, thousands of years ago, a female community flourished at Dalheim's monastery in the rural part of Germany. And recently, when a group of researchers was examining the medieval residues left at the site, they found something that completely surprised them and led to many new queries about the history of humanity. So what did they find? Hello and welcome back to The Abandoned Archaeologist again, the channel to learn all about ancient archaeological findings. Today we'll discuss the discovery of the rare blue pigment from the skeleton of a woman's body. But before we begin, to get your attention, we have a question you can answer at the end of the video by watching it. Why is lapis lazuli or blue pigment so valuable? So write down your answer in the comments section and see if you got it right. Here we begin with the video. Rare Blue Pigment The opening of long-distance Asian trade routes during the European Middle Ages introduced exotic goods such as ultramarine and extraordinary blue pigment produced from lapis lazuli element mined only in Afghanistan. This pigment, as rare and expensive as gold, transformed the European color palette but less is known about its early trader use. Only a few natural and synthetic blue pigments were known throughout the medieval European period from the 5th to the 15th centuries AD, including ultramarine, Egyptian blue, azurite, smalt, and vivianite. Among these blues, ultramarine created by grinding and purifying lazurite crystals from the ornamental lapis lazuli stone was by far the most expensive, reserved for the most abundant manuscripts alongside gold and silver. Lapis lazuli was a quintessential luxurious trade good in the Eurasian pre-modern period mined from a single region in Afghanistan, and its waxing and waning ability in artistic centers throughout Eurasia reflect both its enormous cost and circuitous supply lines along which it was traded over 1000s of miles. The use of highly pure ultramarine in illuminated works was restricted to luxury books of high value and importance in medieval art. Only scribes and painters of exceptional skill would have been trusted with its use. However, before the 15th century, scribes rarely assigned their works, raising questions about the identity of early scribes and illuminators. Even in women's monastery libraries, fewer than 15% of books bear female names or titles. Or before the 12th century, fewer than 1% of books could be attributed to women. As a result, it has long been assumed that throughout the Middle Ages, monks rather than nuns were the primary producers of books. Recent historical research, however, has called this belief into question, revealing that religious women were not only educated, but also prolific producers and consumers of books. Discovery of the Medieval Skeleton of a Woman A woman died in Germany around 1,000 years ago and was buried in an unknown grave in a church cemetery. There was no record of her life, and no historian had reason to know who she was. When modern scientists examined her relics, they discovered something unusual brilliant blue dots in the tartar on her teeth. As a result, the role of women in art in medieval Europe has taken on new significance. The blue particles were lapis lazuli, known as a semi-precious stone, precious and expensive at the time for its vivid color, and was ground up and used as a pigment. Scientists deduced that the woman was an artist working on illuminated manuscripts, a task usually associated with monks. The find is the most direct evidence of a specific woman's involvement in creating high-quality illuminated manuscripts, known as the lavishly illustrated religious or secular texts of the Middle Ages. It also supports other findings that female artisans were not as uncommon as previously thought. Why is it so surprising? Religious women played an especially active role in book production in Germany and Austria, and their work can be traced back to the late 8th century. Although surviving examples of these works are rare and modest, there is a growing body of evidence that by the 12th century, women's monasteries were producing books of the highest quality. For example, the dual-sex monastery of Admont in Salzburg supported a community of nuns who worked in over 200 surviving books for the monastery's 12th century book collection. More than 4,000 books attributed to over 400 women scribes have been identified from the 13th to the 16th century when documentary evidence and record-keeping in Germany were more complete. In addition, Active scriptoria have been identified at 48 women's monasteries. However, because of the precarious documentation of women's monasteries, the small number of surviving books and scribes' propensity to leave their work inside, identifying the early contributions of religious women to medieval book production takes time and effort. As a result, individual female scribes are underrepresented in the historical record, 
and most of their scrabble work likely went unnoticed. Microscopic Analysis Microscopic examinations have recently revealed that dental calculus can entrap and preserve various micro debris associated with craft activities. For example, the presence of lazurite and phlogopite crystals in the form of powder consistent in size and composition with lapis lazuli or derived ultramarine pigment was discovered embedded within the dental calculus of a middle-aged woman buried at a church cemetery. This woman, radiocarbon dated to AD 997 to 1162, is the earliest direct evidence of the utilization of ultramarine pigment by a religious woman in Germany. Furthermore, because the monastery and all of its contents were destroyed in a 14th century fire, this lapis lazuli discovery may be the only surviving evidence of female scribal activity at the site. Predictions about women There are numerous predictions that the woman was involved in book production, pigment preparation, or some medical use. And here are some of the predictions. Pigment preparation It is possible but less likely that the lapis lazuli pigment entered B78's oral cavity through pigment production rather than painting. Ultramarine production from lapis lazuli stone is formed by a laborious process of grinding, progressively washing, and levigating lapis lazuli stone powder, followed by oil flotation to remove impurities and concentrate the blue-bearing lazurite crystals. The mortar in which the lapis lazuli stone was also used to be covered so that it may not go off in dust. This airborne dust may contact dental calculus through inadvertent inhalation, either during the pigment preparation process or afterward, such as during workshop cleaning. Women were traditionally responsible for pigment production, but this gender division of labor may be a late medieval development associated with professionalization of trades and crafts. Lapidary Medicine B78 could also have consumed powdered lapis lazuli as a form of lapidary medicine. Since antiquity, many old world cultures have attributed magical and healing powers to the lapis lazuli stone, primarily used as an amulet stone and a component of eye ointments. Medical lapis lazuli was especially important in the medieval Islamic world, as evidenced by numerous medical recipe books. Unfortunately, there is little evidence that the Mediterranean and Islamic methods of ingesting lapis lazuli pigment were common or even practiced in 11th and 12th century Germany. As a result, while the B78's ingestion of medical lapis lazuli cannot be ruled out, it appears unlikely, given the scarcity of evidence for this practice. Book Production Most plausible scenario is that individual B78 was a woman who worked on high-quality manuscripts. The hiring of a gifted female scribe to create deluxe liturgical books from expensive materials was not uncommon in Germany at this time. In Germany, women's monastic communities, especially during earlier periods, were largely made up of noble or aristocratic women. Many were highly educated and devotional reading was encouraged as a form of religious expression. These women would have led largely labor-free lives, which is consistent with the lack of occupational skeletal stress observed in B78. It is reasonable to assume that artists lick their brushes to make fine points when adding detail to their illuminations, a practice that later artist manuals explicitly mention. Pigments such as lapis lazuli may have been introduced into the oral cavity as a result, or they may have become entrapped with dental calculus. The repeated activity of inserting the brush tip into the mouth could explain the pattern of in situ blue particle distribution observed across multiple calculus fragments. What do you think of these scenarios and the entire discovery? Let us know in the comments below. And the answer to the question we've asked is that, as the blue pigment was rarer than gold, it was known for its beauty, pigmentation, and power. Subscribe for more.